at long last, after 10 years of not a soul landing a punch on the paunch, who's still getting away with pretending he's always right, Harris cut him in public right to his face. She made him bleed. We may look back at this as the equivalent of another at long last, the day McCarthyism died when Chief Counsel to the U.S. Army, Joseph Welsh, asked McCarthy to his face in a public hearing, have you no sense of decency, sir, at long last. McCarthy had no response. His movement shriveled and he died shortly after of alcoholism. But McCarthy's Svengali, Roy Cohn, went on to become Trump's mentor. In the debate, Trump did have responses, as always, responses that his woke tantrumplican flock find credible, despite and even because of our ridicule. They love attention. All it takes to be an asshole is the ability to get excited when people are disgusted by you. It's like masochism that way. Harris may have stopped short of a coup de grace when he went back again and again to his tired old playbook. She could have said, there he goes again, as Reagan did, sealing the fate of his opponent, Walter Mondale. She could have said, coulda, woulda, Donald. We all get it. In your comic book reality, you always save the day. She could have said, oh, Donald, you're such a drama queen. Or, meow, Donald, you're so catty. She could have said, yes, Donald, you're right about everything and anyone who doubts you is evil. Coulda, woulda, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the public would have been shocked by such offensive talk to the most offensive man in the world. The point is she nailed it, and in some ways, we're missing the point with all our cat and dog memes. How did she win? By not taking the bait of the master public masturbator. We need to practice that ourselves. We need to learn to be more like Kamala. It's time to laugh at the patheticness and ignore the bullshit bait. It hasn't always been, and it won't be if he wins, but for now, that's what works. After the debate, Pete Buttigieg explained what Trump is doing with his Springfield, Ohio pet petulance. He's distracting us while keeping the attention on him. He doesn't want us looking at the policies that will be implemented through him. And he wants to keep dominating the news cycle. I think Buttigieg is right. You can tell from her debate performance that Kamala does too. By distracting us, Trump's exciting not just his fans, but all of us, you and me included. Did you ever pinch yourself while getting a shot? Try it. It works. That's threat displacement. Focus on a non-threatening, even a fictional pain, to distract from a threatening one. That's been a MAGA strategy all along. Make up fake threats that Trumpists feel heroic about just by sharing memes. Distract from real threats. Did you ever witness someone's pain and feel relief that it isn't yours? And couldn't be because you're somehow exempt? Did you ever relish other people's pain as evidence that you're somehow exempt? That's schadenfreude, and both sides enjoy it. We anti-Trumpists have been thriving for a decade on the sense that we'd never be as dumb and evil as they are. Most of the resistance's videos on YouTube are that kind of counter-gloating. Zooming way out, you see a world that felt like it was only going to get more comfortable, only to you turn and tumble toward danger. You see a pinch prick of a movement freaking out over non-threats, and you see us all riveted by their cluelessness. Trump, like all dictators emergent in tough times, rose as an irresistible distraction to both allies and enemies. The New York Times ran an article this week about the origins of Trumpism in Richard Hatch, a contestant in the reality TV show Survivor. He was a nasty piece of work who flipped reality TV on its head. He won the contest, not in spite of, but by being a total jerk. Audiences were spellbound. Note to producers, audiences can't take their eyes off the a-holes, whether they want to be like them or feel like they're better than them. Real Housewives and The Apprentice followed. A boor gets the floor. A schmo, an arrogantly stupid person, steals the show. When asked what she thought of Buttigieg's theory, Trump whisperer Maggie Haberman recounted how Trump had said in private, people think I'm playing 3D chess. Most of the time, I'm just eating the pieces. In other words, by her account, there's no reason to assume there's such method to his madness. 
I agree with her and Pete both. Trump proves that being a successful narcissist isn't something you have to plan out surgically. It's something anyone can slouch into. The disregard for civility pays off beautifully, especially at Trump's scale, where every gain in power enables you to rig the system for more gain. It all just comes together. Get to Trump's level and you're practically unstoppable from any angle. Just keep spewing irresponsible shit and people can't take their eyes off you. The main takeaway from the debate? Don't take the bait. Curb your appetite for Trump gossip. Wean yourself off that addiction. Eyes on the prize, winning the election. Hopefully, if we do, we'll be weaning ourselves off Trump anyway. I foresee some postpartum depression, even though we'll be thrilled he's gone. He's been that entertaining. Well, it turns out few people in the world are into as much raw introspection about the human condition as I am. And if you're one of them, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And that's another thing. I'm for hire. I do strategic consulting on dealing with life's tough judgment calls and dealing with total jerks. My email's down below. Get in touch for a free sample session. Thanks.